Hello, it's John Z here for the next Hammer Editor tutorial. Um, there's a few more things we need to cover, uh, talk about before we get into optimization, which is an extremely, extremely uh, head beating against the wall important topic. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about special textures that you're going to need to learn how to use. Um, right now, really all the textures we've been using are basic textures like these um, just uh, well right now these developer textures um, that I've got going around here the um, uh, just quickly did some of these uh, reflective textures specular textures and you saw how to um, deal with those during the QMAP tutorial um, the special textures that we've really gotten into are is trigger right here um, for designating uh, trigger locations and another texture that is illegal of its own is the skybox texture. There's a few more that do special things that I'd just like to talk about and some of them are important to um, to uh, optimization and some of them are important for other things. Also I plan to talk about how to make water here so not like taking a piss but how to make a water brush. Anyway uh, open up your uh, textures catalog here under browse and texture group and type in I don't know no not dev type in tools okay so here are ignore these right here but uh, here are a whole bunch of important textures that we're going to be talking about you're already familiar with the skybox texture and the trigger texture here. There are other textures that you that um, some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Ladder texture you're going to need to use if you want to make ladders, which is a no-no in Team Fortress 2. But if you're making a Counter-Strike map, you might go over something like that. Um, clip textures, hint textures, skip hint and skip we'll get to when we talk about um, uh, optimization. Um, but for right now, I just want to start with this texture, everybody's favorite, no draw. So double click on that and get that selected. What no draw does is that on any surface that it's applied to, uh, it will tell the computer not to render that texture. So instead of when you look at a no draw wall, instead of actually seeing a texture that says no draw, you will see nothing. You will see the skybox or you will see uh, a Hall of Mirrors style blackness if you don't have a skybox. So um, it, it, it will it represents nothing. It represents a null value on their texture. It doesn't draw it. So why would this be useful? Well I'm going to leave this here just so you can see what it looks like in the game. But what it's actually useful for is to cut down on the number of uh, uh, textures, a number of faces that your computer needs to draw. When your map gets big enough, and if you plan on making uh, fantastically complex maps, then they will get big enough, um, you need to pay attention to how many faces the computer is drawing and try to cut down on it as much as possible. And this has to do with optimization, which is what we're going to talk about in the very near future. If you want to cut down on things like compile time and uh, render time, then you need to start making use of things like no draw. For example, the player, if he is standing right here, can see all of this stuff that we see, but technically he can also see, according to the computer, the underside of this uh, little walkway that I've built right here. Now you know I can't see it in, rea in reality. But the computer thinks I can, so this stuff is rendered. If we don't want to render it, if we want to tell the computer, well, don't actually worry about um, drawing these faces, then we can just apply the no draw texture to them. And then it won't matter because uh, I can't see it and the computer won't draw it. So it saves a little bit of time. It's kind of insequential, inconsequential. Um, just by itself, but um, it does stack up. So pay attention to places that um, don't require any drawing and go ahead and no draw them. In fact, when I do maps, then I often start with just everything being no draw 
and then actually drawing and actually texturing manually everything that I can actually see. So I'm going to leave that up there. You can mess around with it if you want. That's something to keep in mind. Some other textures that you might want to check out are clips and player clips. Select player clip right now. So a player clip does pretty much what the texture uh, says it does. It um, it uh, block it, it, it's clipping for players, and the clip is is basically it's blocking entry, it's blocking the way. So anything that's covered by a player clip or will make an invisible wall to players. Now you've probably experienced this to a pretty annoying extent on some maps where you just couldn't go somewhere that you really wanted to go because there was an invisible wall blocking you. Well that's because there was a player clip there. Suppose I didn't want people on this roof, for example, which is a common thing in many maps. If you don't want players to access places that might be unfair, then I can make a brush like this, and I extend it all the way up to the ceiling, with a player clip texture, and then hit enter. And now that I cannot actually enter or, or um, penetrate this block in the game. And I don't have to uh, tie this to any special entity. It is already going to be invisible in the game. You can see it under your viz groups here under um, clips player right here. If you want to turn it off and on you can do that mm -hmm. like what we were talking about in the uh, cube map tutorial. Um, it will be invisible in the game and anywhere where the where that face is, where the face with the player clip is, uh, players will not be able to get past it. But player clip can also have some really practical uses other than making invisible walls, like smoothing out areas that um, look kind of uh, jaggedy, like these stairs right here. Now stairs are sometimes a problem because uh, if they're not um, small enough, then they can actually block people from going up, so they'll have to jump up each individual stair. These stairs I know are small enough, but um, there are some problems. For example, jumping on the stairs, if you try to jump up these stairs, the player will actually jump from one stair and actually hit this vertical stair, and then will actually jump straight up in the air, which is annoying and kind of silly. So instead of doing that, I'm going to grab all my stairs. If you didn't make stairs, don't worry about it. Just remember what I'm talking about. Select player clip. And now I'm going to go make... I'm going to uh, make a player clip here. And then I'm going to cut this solid using our, um, using our uh, clipping tool right here. And make it so that it's actually a ramp. It's going to look like stairs in the game because this player clip won't show up. But when I, uh, in the actual, in, in, when a player actually gets on the stairs, then it will look like, uh, or it will um, act like it's he's just going up a ramp. And this could be a really useful thing to uh, uh, smooth out the um, movement of players. This is also really important if you're making um, if you're making a competitive level maps. Uh, competitive players hate getting hung up on little details in your maps, little uh, little rails and lips and stuff like that. If you can player clip those off, and I'll show some examples when we do funk detailing and other map optimization techniques, um, then that is uh, what it does is by doing that you are um, essentially smoothing out all of your corners, you're making it easier for players to move around, and in a competitive setting that's really important. Similarly, player or just a normal clip does the same thing except instead of clipping just players, it will also clip objects.